Call it. You say, well, I took a couple of quarters once out of my mother's purse. Does that count? Yeah. If she's still living, put the quarters back and give her interest. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever lied? Oh, somebody may sit there and say, well, not really. Not maybe a white lie. Well, you're lying right now. You see, all of us have lied. And now we laugh because we know it's true. But at the same time, you're condemning yourself because you know that you're a sinner. All of us are guilty. All of us have sinned. Adultery. Now, let me say something about sex. God created us male and female all right Amen. He, he wants us to use their sex yeah. is to be used and enjoyed in a marriage relationship between a man and a woman yeah not two men right. not two women Amen. now the People, so many of the people in our education and our politicians and television, the entertainment industry wants you to think that it is okay just to have sex with anybody you want to as long as there's two consenting adults, it's okay. No, it's not. No, it's not okay. It's sin. That's and right. if we get outside of God's Amen. plan, we put our bodies at great risk. Uh, Sexually transmitted diseases is on the increase for the fifth straight year in this country at an all-time high. There's a price to pay. God wants to protect you. Sex is to be used in marriage. And there are many of you here tonight, you may be guilty of sexual sins. And it's bothered you, you felt dirty, you felt shame. And I'm here tonight to tell you God will forgive you tonight. That's right, not only will he forgive you, but he'll cleanse you. And he'll take that guilt and he'll take that shame and he'll set you free tonight. Murder. Manasseh killed his own sons. But I think of what we do as a nation with abortion. Amen. Abortion is murder. Sorry. Now Amen. some of you here tonight, you may be guilty of having an abortion. And it's haunted you. And it's bothered you, it's disturbed you, wish you could go back and make that decision over again, but it's too late. And you maybe you've been asking that question, will God forgive me for what I've done? Yes, he will forgive you. He'll forgive you and he'll set you free tonight. But you've got to come to God tonight. You've got to be willing to confess and repent and believe on the name of Jesus Christ. If you're willing to do that tonight, God will forgive you. Not honoring your parents is a sin. That's right. And we live in an age where a lot of children don't do that. Well, I tell you what, if my children didn't honor me and my wife, I'd slap the fool out of them. Amen. <laughs> yep. Amen. That's what they need. I've got two of my sons here, and I'm proud of them. I've got uh, some of my grandchildren here tonight, and I'm proud of them. The Bible says whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of them. All have sinned and come short of God's glory, it says in Romans. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The whole human race is under a death sentence from God. That's right. Then when the first man and woman sinned, sin came into the world and it infected the human race like cancer. You were born into sin. I was born into sin. We were conceived into sin. And the entire human race is under this death sentence. Ah, but God wasn't satisfied to leave it that way. He loves you. He wants you to be with Him in heaven, but the price of sin has to be paid. We cannot pay the debt of sin. If we pay the debt of sin, it's our death. He doesn't want us to be separated from Him. He wants us to be with Him. So His plan, He sent His Son. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, the bravest man to ever live, 
Jesus Christ came out of heaven down to this earth to save you. If you had been the only person to ever live, he would have come to this earth for you. He took your sins. When he hung on the cross, okay, when he hung on that cross, God poured out on his son all the sins passed. When he hung on that cross and they nailed him to that tree, he was there stripped naked with nails in his hands, nails in his feet. God poured all the sins present. He poured all the sins future. That's us. He poured out the sins of mankind on his son. And he had to turn his back. He couldn't look at his son because of the dirt and the filth of sin that was on his son. And Jesus took that shame willingly. And he took our sins to the grave on our behalf. But on the third day, God raised his son to life. Jesus Christ is alive. He's not dead. He's here. He's here for you tonight. Oh, you say, but Franklin, I've been a member of a church for a long time, and I've gone to Sunday school. Listen, okay, that's good. And I'm glad you've gone to church. And I'm glad you've been in Sunday school. I'm glad you've had a great attendance record. But going to church can't save you. Okay? It, and we live in the South where many people attend church, but they don't have Christ in their hearts. I was one of those. And we went to a small Presbyterian church there in Montreal, and we had a great pastor. His uh, name was Calvin Thielman. And Calvin would uh, take me out, and he taught me how to hunt and shoot guns. And one time he even shot himself in the leg showing me how to shoot. <laughs> but Calvin couldn't save me. And I was 22 years old when I just got to the place in my life where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And maybe some of you here tonight, you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yep. Yeah. And I got on my knees one night and I just said, God, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry. If you could just take the pieces of my life and put it together, I'll give it to you. I surrender tonight. And that night, I asked God to forgive me. I invited Christ to come into my heart. And when I prayed that prayer, I meant it. I didn't know what all that meant. I just knew that I was tired of running. And I wanted him to take control of my life. And he did. And he'll do that for you tonight. If you're not sure that your sins are forgiven, you can be sure in just a moment. I'm going to ask you to stand in just a moment. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. Manasseh, this wicked, wicked king, 55 years he reigned. A man reaps what he sows. They'll be paid back for what their hands have done, the Bible says. The Bible says, woe to the wicked, disaster is upon them. And when the Bible says, woe, you better listen. God judged Manasseh. And not only did he judge Manasseh, but he judged Israel. He judged Jerusalem. He sent the Babylonians. And the Babylonians came in and they destroyed the city. They killed people left and right. And they took Manasseh and they actually put hooks in his skin. And they led him all the way back to Babylon. <laughs> and put him in a jail. Put him in a dungeon. Oh, I tell you, Manasseh was in trouble, bound in chains, in a dark, damp prison, hooks in his flesh. But the Bible says, in his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord, his God. He humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his prayers, listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Listen to this. A man that had murdered his own sons in the fire. A man that had led the whole nation into witchcraft and idolatry and all of these things. This, this guy's got to be one of the most wicked men that had ever lived. If yeah. God can forgive him, forgive. he'll forgive you. Yeah. But you've got to humble yourself tonight before God. You've got to be willing to say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm willing to turn from my sins. 
I believe Jesus Christ is your son who died for me, who you raised to life, and I'm willing to invite him to come into my heart. You pray that prayer tonight, God will forgive you. That's right. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God is a God of mercy. The Bible says the Lord God is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. God forgave Manasseh, and not only did he forgive him, he restored him, took him back and put him on the throne. And as a result, Manasseh was changed, and Manasseh began to undo all the wicked things that he had done in Israel. He began to clean up the country, and all the sins that he committed, all these foreign gods that he introduced, he began to destroy those idols. Manasseh was changed, and God blessed him, and he'll bless you. What prison are you in tonight? Is it a prison of anger, jealousy? Drugs, alcohol, sex. You can be free tonight. Manasseh was set free. You can be free. Manasseh was forgiven. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive our sins, the Bible says, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says that Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. Tonight, God will forgive you. But you have to come to God His way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There are many religions in the world. But I said it earlier, but there's only one gospel. Only one gospel. Lots of religions. You say, but right now, how about all the Mohammedans? And how about all the Buddhists? And how about all the Krishnas? How about all these people from all over the world that believe something else? Won't they be in heaven if they're sincere? The only way to heaven is through Christ. And a person who is a Buddhist comes to God through Jesus Christ, confessing their sins, repenting, and believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to be in heaven. If a Muslim comes and he confesses his sin and acknowledges Jesus Christ as the Son of God who took the sins of the world, who died on a cross for our sins, who was buried, who God raised to life. If that Muslim puts his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he's going to be in heaven. But you cannot get to heaven any other way except through Christ, okay? He's the one who took our sins. He died in our place. And let me say for the Muslim who accepts Christ, he's no longer a Muslim, is he? Amen. He's a follower of Christ. And how about the Buddhist who puts his faith and trust in Christ? He's no longer a Buddhist. He's a follower of Christ. And my question to you tonight, are you a follower of Christ? Are your sins forgiven? Have you trusted Him as your Savior? Are you following Him as your Lord? Are you living your life for Him? And if you're not, a lot of times I'll ask people, are you saved? Are your sins forgiven? I think so. <laughs> think so. This is either heaven or hell. It's life or death and you think so? I'm talking about knowing so without any shadow of doubt. Are your sins forgiven? If you're here tonight and you say, Franklin, I'm not sure, but I'd like to make sure. Here's what I want you to do tonight. I would like for you, just wherever you are, to stand, okay? And by standing, you're saying to God, I'm a sinner. By standing, you're saying to God, I'm sorry for my sins. By standing... You're saying to God, I believe Jesus Christ is your son, and I want to trust him as my savior, and I want to follow him as my Lord from this night on. So wherever you are, if you would like to invite Christ into your heart, if you'd like to be forgiven of your sins, remember, God can forgive Manasseh, he can forgive you, but you've got to be willing to take this stand. Will you do that tonight? Just wherever you are, just stand up. If you'd like to ask Christ into your heart, just stand. Just stand. God bless you. Amen. Just stand. You say, but Franklin, why do I have to stand? It's a little embarrassing in front of so many people. 
Jesus took a stand for you when he went to that cross. They stripped him, they nailed him, they cursed him, spat on him, beat him. He did that willingly for you. That's why I'm asking you to take a stand for him. He took a stand for you publicly. You take a stand tonight publicly for him. Are you sure your sins are forgiven? I'm not talking about thinking so. Are you absolutely sure? If you're not sure, do it right now. Just stand. Just wherever you are, just stand. God bless you. Anyone else? We're going to have a word of prayer together in just a moment. But I want to give people enough time to think about this. You may never have another opportunity again. Just stand wherever you are. We'll have a word of prayer. Just stand. Just stand. Amen. God bless you. Anyone else? Amen. Anyone else? Remember I told you, God loves you. It's true, he does, he loves you. He wants to make himself real to you. He wants to come into your heart, to your life, but sin is there. Sin has to be removed. And how's that sin removed? It's by faith, by you simply believing. That's right. Just saying, I'm willing to turn from my sins, and I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me, and I want him to come into my heart and take control of my life from tonight on. If you pray that, he'll forgive you. He'll do it right now. Come on. Anybody else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Just stay standing. We're going to have a prayer here in just a minute. God bless you. We have a word of prayer. But this is the most important night of your life. All the dirt in your life, he'll take it tonight. He'll set you free from that prison you've been in. You can have a new life, a new beginning tonight. Just tell God you're sorry you're willing to turn from your sin that you believe Jesus is his son that you want to invite him to come into your heart to take control of your life that you'll surrender to him if you're willing to pray that prayer if you're willing to trust him he'll change you tonight anyone else we're going to have a word of prayer anybody else for those of you that are standing I want you to pray this prayer with me. And a prayer is just talking to God like I'm talking to you, okay? And I want you to pray this prayer out loud. You're not talking to me, you're talking to God. So pray this prayer out loud after me. Dear God, Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. Forgive me. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he died for my sins. That you raised him to life. That you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior. I want to trust him as my savior. I want to follow Jesus as my Lord. I want to follow Jesus as my Lord. From this day forward. From this day forward. Forever. Forever. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.